Morning, guys. So some of you have asked me to make another video where I show you how to integrate Excel with Notion. But when I started working on that video, I realized that there are some concepts with Power Automate and uh, yeah, integrations in general, which are kind of hard to explain. And I realized that I would need a whole another video just to explain to you all these concepts. So here it goes. In this video, you will see some more advanced Power Automate concepts or tricks or hacks on how to work with data and more specifically how to do object matching so how to check if one object is in one list and the other way around and um, this is kind of a huge part of this whole integration and this video breaks it down apart um, very nicely i believe so the next video which will be the actual integration will be much easier to watch so let's just get started shall we right so we will be getting a list from tasks from excel looking like this so we will receive an array or a list of tasks and the tasks will be objects as you can see so each object will have um, a set of properties like the, the task ID, the task name, and any other property that we have in Excel. Or if you have a completely different data set, this will be your, your data object. But just know that there, this, this task ID must stay. There must be one unique ID, one primary key, which we will use to match the tasks with each other, essentially. So we'll be getting that from Excel. And this format is quite nice for doing any operations on this but we'll be getting this from Notion. It's a bit, uh, <laughs> that's not what we re really want, but we, with some work, it's not that much work, we can turn that into the same format as we have in Excel. But now the question is, we would like to know which tasks only exist in Excel and which tasks only exist in Notion. I can just take the first task from Notion. Let's say I'm trying to figure out which tasks in Notion I need to delete because they only exist in Notion, but not in Excel. So we can go and we can take the first task from Notion and the first task, task from Excel and then compare the task IDs. So task ID 8 is also present in Excel and we've just ran by it. It's, it's the first element on the list, so it receives a check. So both elements are there, no need to delete anything. But the story gets a bit more interesting with the second one. So the first task in Excel has task ID 8, so that's not the task that we're looking for. Let's try the second one. So that's 55, that's not the one. The third one, 23, that's not the one. 12, that's not the one. So now we reach the end of the list and it turns out that the task ID 99 is not present in Excel. This means that it needs to be deleted in Notion. This approach uses loops. Loops in Power Automate are pretty slow. And is there a better approach? Turns out there is. It's called filter array and select. It's using both of these blocks. And if you manage to, to turn around your problem to use this two blocks, your app will be very, very fast. So how do this filter array and select work? So they run for each of the elements in an array. And let's say I want to use the multiply expression. Let, let's use the select block and use the multiply expression. So I want to multiply each of the items in an array by three. So it takes the first element, multiplies it by three and stores it in a new array and then goes for the second element does exactly the same that's six and then for the next one and for the next one and for the next one and that's the actual result of select so a new array with all these multiplied elements now for the filter let's say i want to filter out all the elements which are less than three so let's take the first element the first element is one which is obviously less than three so we'll t we'll put that in the new array and the second one is two and we'll also put that in the new array but the third one is actually equal to three which is actually equal to three and not less than three so we're not putting anything in the new array here and the same for four and same for five so the result of the filter array will be new array with just the first two elements because they were less than three we want to use these beta two blocks which i just mentioned uh, so yeah let's just do that but now we must solve a couple of problems as you can see so ideally what we would like um we should be able to know if a task is over there so on the other side immediately so without this other loop we just want to run through the first array. So in this example, we want to run through the from notion array in a loop. And then for each of the, the items, we should be able to tell if 
a task in Excel exists like in one shot without any loops, without any complications, just like, just like this, as fast as you say cookie. Let's pretend we have an array that's called Excel tasks, and we can get the first task on the list by using this array accessor, by just using this zero. If we want to get the second one, we can use one instead of zero here. Um, but this returns tasks based on their position, how they were returned from Excel API, ex essentially, how Power Automate has them stored in, in its own store, essentially. But that's not what we want. We would like, ideally, for this zero to be the task ID. So what if, instead of this zero, we could just type in the task ID, in this example, 99, and this would return a task with ID 99. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? As you can see, it has these quotes, so it's a string. And this means that this is actually a key. And this could as well be a word. Do you remember what can you query using words? Well, objects, of course. So let's turn these Excel tasks into an object. But can Power Automate even do that? Um, well, not really, but we can hack our way there. We'll make a solution entirely within Power Automate, but there's no one single function that can do what we want. So what we can get with no tricks, also with some tricks, but <laughs> with with very inbuilt or with very traditional tricks, let's say. So we can get array of objects. This is task ID and this is the item position. And I would like to call this array an Excel matcher, or if you are looking at Notion tasks, this would be a Notion matcher. So it basically helps us to map task IDs to element positions, but how to make this Excel matcher, it's called a select. It basically runs through all the elements. It takes in an array and runs an expression on each element. But now your question might be, how do I get the item positions? There's no way to get the index within the select. What if instead of Excel tasks, so we can pass the, the original Excel tasks, what we get from Excel, this task ID1, task ID2, and all the other properties into select. If we call the item function, it would just return the task. But what if instead of this array, we could just supply array of numbers and one number for each of the elements. So we have an array of kind of indexes. And if you ever used Python, this is very, very familiar. But yeah, how can we do that in Power Automate? It seems impossible. But yeah, there is one savior for us. It's called a range. It's called a range function. And what a range function does, it takes in the start index, which will always be zero in our case, because Power Automate starts indexing elements with zero and then the second element will be count and then count means how many elements are there how many elements in the range should we create and this count is simply the length of excel tasks so what this function returns it returns exactly what we need so the first element will be zero because that's what we supply and then the second one will be one and two and that's that's the, the range that we need essentially. And now that we have that, we can finally use the select function. So inside the select function, the from will be our range array with, with this function. And then inside the, the map, we'll have one single property as we discussed. And inside this property, we want to get, so the property key should be the task ID. And what we will do is just use the Excel tasks array, so the original array with Excel tasks, but we are going to use that indices from the range. We're going to use that numbers to actually access this array. And this is, this is, this is very, very powerful. This is what makes this operation so fast. And then from each of the arrays, we're just going to extract the task IDs. And then for, for the values, we'll just use current number in that we're getting from the range in the, the current loop iteration, essentially. So that's the current item. And if we run this in Power Automate, so the from, we will be getting this, this range number. So zero, one, two, three. Uh, one to three that works perfectly and then on the other side we'll be getting an array each of the excel tasks so task id is in position zero and task id two is in position one we're pretty much there actually that's our excel matcher but yeah you're correct this is still an array we cannot this is not an object we still need to convert it into an object um and here's a secret how to do it so <laughs> let's turn this array into json uh oh, <laughs> you, you might know where we're going with that, but uh, yeah, let's just play with the text a bit. So let's turn these two 
braces, so square brackets and curly bracket in the beginning, and the same pair at the end into just a curly bracket, and the same in the end. And instead of this, so we are just getting rid of the array in the beginning, and this is just a string, so we can manipulate it however what we want. And now let's just replace these curly braces and commas with just commas. Ta-da! <laughs> it's exactly the 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 object that we want. So this is now an object. Well, um, of course, this is this is just this is still a string, but we can turn it into an object using Power Automate's JSON function. And now we have our Excel Matcher. This is so uh, when we will be doing the uh, the actual tutorial, this will be called Excel Matcher object. So now what we can do is just use Excel Matcher with the array accessor and type in the task ID. We get the information that it's that this is in position zero, and we could do the same for task ID one. So perfect. That looks like it works. And what happens if we pass, let's say, a task ID that doesn't exist? This would crash the program, <laughs> but there is a very simple fix for that. And I'll show you how to do that in the actual tutorial. But this would return null. And this is, this is exactly what we want. If the item is not there, we are just getting null back. And yeah, this is, this is exactly what we want, actually. And there is more. Now we can get any Excel task or Notion task by task ID. So not only do we get the item position but we also can get the excel task and also all of its properties you've already seen that but excel tasks and then we can use this excel matcher object with the task id and it would just get all the properties for us in a single expression and that's very very powerful i realized i kind of stopped saying that in my recent videos but if you came this far and actually managed to understand everything you truly truly are a hero so congrats to you and uh, see you in the next video cheers bye